Can't get enough of the Edwardians? In this video, discover the passion and drama of Elgar's First Symphony, a work straight from the era of Downton Abbey. I'm Calvin Dotsey, and this is the Houston Symphony's Classical Notes. Completed in 1908, the First Symphony of English composer Edward Elgar is a fascinating work. Elgar wrote that he intended it to express a wide experience of human life with a great charity, love, and a massive hope in the future. The symphony weaves a complex web of musical ideas that suggest the arc of a masterfully constructed novel. Like many symphonies, it is divided into four parts, or movements. The first movement begins with an introduction, a sort of prologue. In the letter to a friend, Elgar described the opening as simple and in intention, noble and elevating. The sort of ideal call in the sense of persuasion, not coercion or command, and something above everyday and sordid things. This ideal call reappears at pivotal moments throughout the symphony. A more intense theme begins the main body of the movement. Perhaps it represents the everyday and sordid things that the ideal call hopes to transcend. A transitional passage then leads to a more lyrical, contrasting theme. The stormy music then resumes, building to an ominous statement. These main ideas interact and evolve over the course of this dramatic movement. The second movement begins with a whirling idea in the violins. This soon leads to an imperious march. Suddenly, this imposing music vanishes and we hear something very different. Regarding this music, Elgar's friend W. H. Reed recalled a telling episode that occurred during a rehearsal. Dissatisfied, Elgar stopped the musicians and said, Don't play it like that. Play it like... Then he hesitated and added under his breath before he could stop himself. Like something we hear by the river. This suggests that Elgar may have had in mind pastoral imagery for this passage, or perhaps memories of his childhood in the English countryside. The imperious march and the lyrical river music alternate until the movement fades away. Near the end, we hear a hint of the ideal call as the music slows. The second movement slips seamlessly into the third. This tranquil opening actually uses the same notes as the whirlwind that began the second movement. This becomes this. becomes this. After this serene beginning, a more troubled idea arises.
This despondent motif is actually closely related to the ominous, fateful idea from the first movement. This becomes this. This troubled music, however, is followed by one of Elgar's most poignant melodies. Above a sketch for this theme, Elgar inscribed a quote from Shakespeare, Hamlet's last words, the rest is silence. The slow movement cycles through these ideas, ultimately finding peace. Like the first movement, the last begins with an introduction. Amid what sounds like a joyful flurry of recognition from the woodwinds, the ideal call that began the symphony returns. Another contrasting idea also appears, a march. Though there are many other ideas in this movement, these two seem to be the most important. The march in particular evolves dramatically as the music unfolds. First, it becomes powerful and forceful. Later, the ideal call seems to transform it into a dreamy, lyrical melody. After many developments and an intense musical struggle, the symphony ends with the return of the ideal call. Perhaps this is Elgar's massive hope in the future. You can hear Elgar's first symphony and more great orchestral music performed by the Houston Symphony each week through Houston Public Media. Thank you for watching and enjoy the music.